Last week, Dave won the award for the dirtiest trick of the series, and so it's forfeit time again. So this week, Dave will be presenting this convertible item with a straight face and the tops off, come rain or shine, at least until lunchtime. And guess what's forecast? There's an old saying, what goes around comes around, and having fallen about laughing at Kim having to drive the tiniest car we could find a couple of weeks ago, I suppose it's poetic justice that now it was my turn to dance around the proverbial handbag. Yes, this week I've got two of the cutest, most feminine convertibles known to womankind. The Mitsubishi Colt CZC2 and the Peugeot 207cc. These cars were never designed to be four-seaters. In fact, they're what you term two plus twos. It's impossible to get a baby seat in the back of one of these, for example. And, unless you're a small child, or Amy Winehouse, you would have difficulty sitting in the little rear seats, especially if the driver happens to be over three feet tall. These cars are very similar. Both are C plus Cs, that's coupe plus convertible. Both have very similar size engines and both have excellent safety features. So, which one is best? We picked out these two among the main contenders because Peugeot and Mitsubishi say they're top sellers. At first glance, these two are very alike, but I do prefer the lines of the Peugeot. On the whole, it looks sportier and more sleek than the Colt, which, if you ask me, looks like one of Bigfoot's slippers on wheels. But enough of the aesthetics, which one handles the best? This is the Mitsubishi Colt CZC2. This feisty little number is powered by a 107 brake horsepower, 1.5 litre petrol engine and it's got a slick five-speed gearbox. This little car is really nippy and that gearbox is great, but there is one subtle problem. Although the gear drops in perfectly, the gear change is anything but smooth, unless you feather the clutch. The same can't be said for the steering, which is superb, and that's everything you'd expect from a Mitsubishi. That is, until you start cornering at high speeds, especially in the wet. There doesn't appear to be an awful lot of headroom in either car for the upwardly endowed, but at least that's not an issue if you have no roof. Having said that, the tops of the screens can still hinder visibility when it's folded away in the boot. There are rather a lot of useful cubby holes for your paraphernalia, yet the whole dashboard is a bank of plastic and the heater dials look like a 70s transistor radio or somebody's clever usage of bottle tops. The trouble is, of course, this is a convertible, and this is England. Ah. Mitsubishis are renowned for their anti-trap window mechanisms, which is fine for preventing your little sausages getting caught, but a bit problematic when they're sodden with rain. And there's one very good reason why the Colt CZC is so popular. That's because in just 22 seconds, you can convert this little hardtop into a chic, open-top fashion accessory. And we have a puddle. This is one huge British puddle. <laughs> There's always one complete muppet who can't drive in bad weather. Just as well the Colt is particularly well insulated. So, onto the Peugeot. The interior is crafted beautifully, 
But, as for driving, how does it compare to the Mitsubishi? This time around, Peugeot have been more expressive with their exterior styling than when they brought out the 206. For example, the back has no girly handles either side of the boot space, and the tail end finishes with a more dynamic flick. The front grille and splitter area have just that bit more masculine prowess, and I like its long sloping headlights and the chrome surround fogs down below. I found the automatically folding mirrors to be quite a gimmick too, which tuck themselves in nicely when you lock the car. The interior is more luxurious than that of the Colt, and there are more high-tech gadgets, including a clever little fragrance diffuser on the top of the dash to accompany the onboard computer, complete with all the sat-nav and digital goodies that you could think of. It's certainly light on its feet and therefore has that little extra amount of pow off the mark than its heavier counterparts. And although the wheels are fairly slim, the grip is surprisingly tenacious. Both cars were nice and quiet with roof up or down, especially at cruising speeds. I was quite shocked. Each car has an enormous boot capacity with the roof up, but even with it down, there's enough space for your toothbrush, lipstick and purse. I'm not entirely sure it would stretch as far as a whole handbag though. So, in reflection, I feel perhaps Mitsubishi have fallen off the wagon a tad with this model's looks, but still, the handling, acceleration and general nuance of its capabilities tops the Peugeot, especially regarding the prices, and you really don't get that much more of the extra outlay on the high-spec 207. Then again, if you prefer looks over performance, it shouldn't bother you too much. <laughs>